The Witch's Children and the Queen. The Witch's Children and the Queen. This book is written by Ursula Jones and it is illustrated by Russell Aito. For Gabriel and Johnny, for Meg and the Sorceress. One rainy day, the witch's children went for a walk down the street. Look out! said the buses to each other. Here comes the witch's children, and they hid behind the lorries. Look out! said the number sixteen bus. The witch's children are coming, and that means trouble. They met Gemma waiting at the bus stop. "I'm going to the palace," she said, "to see the queen's soldiers." "Well, come too," said the eldest of the witch's children, and they all climbed aboard the number sixteen bus. The witch's children began and bought their tickets from the bus conductor. The little one put hers in her hat. So far, no trouble," chugged the number sixteen bus. Oh no! Gasped Gemma. I've left my money at home. How will I pay my fare to the palace? Like this," said the eldest one, and he changed Gemma into a goose. Lay an egg," said the eldest one to the goose, and Gemma the goose laid a golden egg. That will do nicely," said the conductor. Thank you," honked Gemma the goose to the eldest one. "Change me back now, please." "Can't," said the eldest one. "I haven't learned how to do that yet." "Sorry," said the conductor. "Geese are not allowed to be on the bus." "Get off, goose!" The goose cried. "Now we're in trouble," groaned the number sixteen bus. Now we're in trouble," murmured the passengers, and the little one laughed till she got hiccups. The goose waddled off the bus. The tears dripped down her beak. "Cheer up, Gemma," said the middle one to the goose. "Watch," and she changed the bus conductor into a rich sultan. Poof. And the passengers into his smiling, bowling courtiers, and she changed the number sixteen bus into a magic carpet. A goose is allowed on a magic carpet," said the middle one. "Hold tight, Miss Goose," beamed the Sultan, and they flew, flew to the palace on the number sixteen magic carpet. The queen's soldiers were lined up in her front yard. The magic carpet swished to and fro over their heads. It brushed their bus bees off. Nobody could tell whose hat was whose. "Oi!" shouted the queen from her balcony. "You on the carpet? You're messing up my army. Come down to land." "Can't," said the middle one. "I haven't learned how to do that yet." Now we're in trouble," puffed the magic carpet. "Now we're in trouble," wailed the goose, the sultan, and the courtiers. And the little one laughed till she nearly fell off the magic carpet, and that cured her hiccups. "Stop that!" commanded the queen, "and get us out of trouble." The little one saluted. "I don't know any spells yet, your majesty. We'll make one up." Bellowed the queen, so the little one did, and all the queen's soldiers changed into jam tarts. It said the little one. Sorry, the queen turned purple. She was horribly cross. Someone might eat them, she growled, and the queen's little dog hopped down from the balcony and picked up a tart in his mouth. The duke looked out of the palace window. Call for help! Yelled to the queen. Yelled the queen. The dog's eating the army. Help!
called the Duke. Help! called the Goose, the Sultan, and the Courtiers. Help! squeaked the Jam Tarts. We're in jam, your majesty, ma'am. The Queen scowled at the little one. Does your mother know you're up on a carpet, putting spells on my soldiers? The little one was scared. No, said the little one. But I'd like to fetch her right now. How? scoffed the queen. Like this, said the eldest one, and he crossed his eyes. Like this, said the middle child, and showed her knickers. Like this, said the little one, and chewed up her bus ticket and spat it out. How many times? said the witch's voice out of the air. Said the witch's voice out of the air. Have I told you, children, not to do that? And then, whoosh! There she was on her broomstick. Especially, the witch continued, in front of a queen. The witch's children smiled. That fetched her," said the little one. The witch curtsied to the queen. "Mum's here now," said the little one. "She'll sort it, your Majesty." And the witch did. She changed the jam tarts back into soldiers. She put all the right busbies back on the soldiers' heads. She changed the goose back into Gemma, and the courtiers back into passengers. Then she changed the sultan back into the bus conductor. She changed the number sixteen. Magic carpet back into the number sixteen bus, and they were all happy, especially the little one. The sun came out, and the queen gave the witch a medal. Then the witch's children flew away with their mother on her broomstick, over the rainbow, and home to play with their pet spiders. The end.